Welcome to another episode of Euphoric, the podcast. I'm here with Megan Swan, who has been on our show before, and I'm so excited to bring her back to talk about new developments in wellness and what you need to prioritize if you've ditched alcohol or have really big goals and dreams and really want to make sure you get to the next level without burning out. So Megan is going to share a little bit more about herself and also many good tips around the wellness area. Megan, how are you doing today? I'm I'm well, you know, can't complain. It's Monday. How are you? I'm doing very well too. Um, I also love that, you know, not only have you been on this show before, we've like gone back years back before I've been on your show, but you've also just finished the certification where you just got five more certifications under your belt in the Empower Day of Coach certification program. So Megan and I just got to connect in Palm Springs, which is incredible. And that's where we got the idea for having this podcast episode. Um, but can you get the listeners up to speed a little bit about what you do and what you focus on in your business? Yeah. So now I'm thrilled to say that I'm eight times certified. I added these five new certifications that really complemented everything that I was already doing. And I think just gave me uh, a confidence boost and around, you know, specifically confidence, success and mindset coaching. I was already doing bits of that and uh, yeah, giving me like a whole new toolbox uh, in terms of the NLP and the hypnosis and, and it's just Things that will serve my clients who, generally speaking, are women, although I have loved working with men in the past. I often, um, yeah, they come to me for all different reasons, but inevitably it comes around either a lack of energy or a lack of confidence or a lack of clarity around what they're doing in their lives. So whether that's in you know a leadership role or in corporate role or like a big change in their life. Um, Maybe they're going through um, new to motherhood or they're going through a divorce or they want to change their career in some way and and they're not really sure. And inevitably when you get at, when you prioritize your wellness, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, all those answers really fall into place a a lot quicker and and it feels more embodied and grounded, um, you know, what your next move is. Yeah. Oh, this is so brilliant. I'm going to have so many personal questions of my own because I totally relate to this. I'm so curious. So I know that a lot of times you do work with like, you know, leaders, female founders, you know, female entrepreneurs. And so there's all of this stuff going on in their lives and, and what woman isn't going through a lot in their life and has a lot of, you know, things to juggle and things on her plate, whether you just ditch alcohol and you're kind of like coming to the surface and really wanting to prioritize yourself, or you have really big goals and dreams. And, you know, there's always something to do in that area to move that forward. What do you see as like the most common um, like issue of someone who like kind of puts their wellness on the back burner as they're kind of trying to go after these new bigger goals and dreams or with the leadership or the female founders you work with? Is there any kind of common denominator that you see being ignored as they're growing in their like professional lives? And then the, the wellness takes like a back seat, or how do you see that happening? Yeah, well, I think it's just this general prioritizing of of the momentum that seems really positive. So whether that's their business is exploding or they got a new promotion or they're, you know, they're dealing some with something business and family or life and it feels like like a, an upward good thing. So they kind of let the wellness and the self-care found, foundational stuff fall to the wayside with this idea that either they'll get back to it later at some theoretical <laughs> fairy tale time in the future or that like they haven't necessarily got to the the stage that they're really feeling it in a, a massive negative way yet like it might be manifesting in terms of uh an, a daily energy slump at three o'clock where they feel like they need to up the caffeine or sugar or their um you know some <laughs> clients have told me they were like taking power naps or whatever but this clear lack of consistent energy throughout the day uh, or they're not sleeping like they used to, or um, yeah, it's just feeling like anything like this, this, even though it's good stress, maybe that, that the stress is, is kind of about to break them. So mm-hmm. that can mean like their brain fog or yeah, just like if any additional one bad thing happens in their life, like it's just not going to be, not going to be good. And they're going to feel like they're so overwhelmed that the, you know, the ship is going down kind of thing. So it's just like this sense that they're in this 
equilibrium, but you know, it's not a very uh, robust um, flow. So any one thing goes wrong, like a pandemic, like, you know, one other unpredictable health problem in, with a family member or something like that, they just don't feel like they have the tools to handle handle it in a way that that feels good. And I always go back to like, let's fill your toolbox so you have them when you need them. And then we're not using them all at the same time to manage the unknowns because that's just the reality. Like there's always going to be unknowns, whether it's in business, career, motherhood, life. Yeah, absolutely. And what do you think happens like as a society that we have normalized certain things? Like, what do you think as someone who's like vetted and and very, you know, expert opinion on wellness and just how women can really thrive at any age? Like, what are some things we've normalized as a society as just normal as like signs of like either getting old or, you know, being really busy that like in your expert opinion, like these are not normal. Your body actually can thrive so much better than this, but we've just accepted this. Yeah, well, I'm not really a person that talks a lot about weight gain, but I think that's kind of like a common denominator that a lot of particularly women can can relate to in that we hear this narrative of like, oh, I'm getting older, like the extra few pounds or or and and it's so it's like a compound effect, right? So the more you kind of tolerate the five, it creeps into 10, 15 and and where it creeps, it's just harder to get it back. It's really like any given one wellness, you know, thread or practice. Uh, I really do believe that you have to be somewhat okay with with some ebb and flow. You know, you're, when your life is in a different phase, uh, or you know, you're traveling a lot. Like there needs to be some flexibility in these practices. But at the same time, the moment that you get so far out of whatever your own homeostasis of feeling really good is, it's so much harder to get that back. And then to your point, as we age, particularly as women, there's all these narratives that kind of support, like not really trying to get back to, you know, not that you need to be your 20 year old body, like particularly post motherhood, like that's not necessarily going to happen, but you can have this different body. That's the same level of, of thriving, or I would argue even better. Like in my case, I feel better at 45 than I ever have. Yeah. And how many kids do you have? Two, two boys. Two boys. Amazing. And so like whether it's, you know, the brain fog or the tiredness or the energy slumps like we we're talking about or like feeling less out of shape or that our body is less capable of doing these things, like there's a part of you that's like, oh, no, like this actually can get better with time. This actually can be get better if you prioritize it. And and something I think it's important that was you work with people who also have these big dreams and ambitions in your philosophy, like if we don't focus on this, the other stuff like won't even happen. Right. Yeah. And I mean, one of our common denominators is this layer. If you're drinking every once in a while, like it's definitely keeping you in this loop of just buying into what society normalizes as not needing to be changed. And, you know, I think if you get really honest with yourself and that's all way easier to do when you start stripping back these layers of everyday toxins that most of us are consuming, whether consciously or unconsciously, um, and, and all these other things that are kind of just either fallen by the wayside over time or built up over time that make it just seem harder to get back to where you were, you know, it's, it's like this, um, physical literal and then also analogy right like you you start gaining a little weight or you're not sleeping and you're just sort of this was for me in early motherhood I just resigned myself that like not sleeping a solid eight hours was the new norm when it didn't need to be but you buy into it's like oh you know moms are sleep deprived and then you don't really go much further to be like no wait like my number one sanity wellness tool is quality sleep. So how can I get that back? And then it's all about layering the positive new habits in so that you make it feel like that's just the way your life is now. It's not this, this routine, quote unquote, that you're doing to get back there. Yeah. And so I'm sure as you work with like really high achieving women, women who have like these big dreams, ambitions, female founders, entrepreneurs, all of that stuff, leaders, I'm sure that time is obviously a critical kind of, you know, thing that nobody has really. And we all have the same 24 hours in a day. 
So are there any kind of like myth busting or objective busting thing that you talk to your clients or your audience about, about how to just find the time to like reprioritize some of this? And I'm sure you have like a lot of tips and tricks on that too. But like, I think that's always, you know, if health is something that like is never a check mark, it's not like, oh, I focused on it one month and now I'm done for the rest of my life. It's like a daily recommitment. Uh, how do you help other people find time or how do you even come back to yourself to always prioritize it as well? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think particularly with high functioning, like high performance women, the, the narrative is like, there's just no more time in the day. So, um, one clear myth is it's, it's not not necessarily about changing a lot. Like probably there's a few things, micro shifts that can improve, but it's more about figuring out what you're already doing that's really serving you, removing the layer of guilt that you're not, quote unquote, doing enough or, you know, meditating enough, uh, exercising enough, eating enough greens, because that inevitably just it keeps you in this sense of lack and self-judgment that's really not helping progress in a good way. So it's like, OK, what well, while we have this positive thing already happening Let's maybe add a little bit more of that. Let's say like you're nailing healthy breakfast. Amazing. So how can we have uh, the healthy breakfast mentality that you have like drip a little bit more into lunch and or dinner? And um, one way is to take to have like a, an item inspirational bank of go to meals, because as women, like we're just so exhausted making decisions. So one more decision of like making a good uh, choice at lunch is just like one more thing. So like, just have that planned for the month and don't make it necessarily have to be so complicated or gourmet. It's like, just take the decision-making out of what am I cooking? What am I grocery shopping? What am I um, preparing? Either do it all in a, in a short period of time on a Sunday and, and then just let that not have to be a decision made all week. Um, or, yeah, just have this bank. And, and another tool that a lot of these um, high-performing women are, I'm often researching like what is the best meal service <laughs> in that individual city? Because I really believe that ultimately we do want to be cooking a little bit more. We want to have home prepared, you know, cooked meals as much as possible instead of just defaulting to Uber Eats or whatever, or, you know, a lot of like processed um, power bars or whatever. They, they, they do have their place. Um, but ultimately so many things can be improved by just in the level of, of nutrition. And, um, yeah, this is really what I'm going back to more and more. Uh, I love to focus on all sorts of wellness, but at the end of the day, it often comes down to just eating more whole food, plant-based and sleeping better. And like, how are we moving our body? And that's, and that's another one of, I don't have time. It's like, okay, well, what are you already doing? You're probably already cleaning. You're probably already running errands. You're probably already, or, or you know, where can you walk more? Can you take a, a meeting on a walk? Or So instead of trying to add in this whole new exercise routine that a given client has decided, you know, either she doesn't like, or there's no time or whatever, it's like, well, no, you, you're already moving a lot throughout your day. So how can we make that just a little bit more effective for you? And again, it's so important just to remove that layer of guilt because as women, we're just judging ourselves all day long. And that's counterintuitive to your wellness. Yeah. Well, I love some of these tips and let's imagine, I know everyone's going to be different. I know you're going to have like very personalized assessments into what's already working for someone and not, but let's just take a very typical client of yours in like a very in-depth one-on-one -on -one that they might do it for you. And please do share with us later, you know, your offers, if you have one-on-one, -on -one, if you have some group offers as well. Um, but let's say someone comes to you and it's just like, Megan, please, like I'm giving this to you, please help me with this. What are some of the things that you would initially do for them? And then I, I know you mentioned that like, you know, living in our environment at this time and age of our society means that we do pick up like a lot of toxins and stuff. So are there any kind of like detoxing things that you do with your clients if it needs or uh, necessitates it? And just how would you like walk someone through like working with you? Like what are some of those things that you would focus on or layer in and stuff like that? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, it's a common, I mean, they fill out an 
an in-depth questionnaire. So the first time I'm speaking to them, I already have, you know, like 20 questions that I want to drill down on to really get, you know, compound time for them and, and really create some quick wins and understand ultimately, like, what do they think at this point, their personal goals and dreams are about feeling better or wanting to look different or, or have more confidence in a certain area. And it really comes down to, okay, so what are the stories that they're telling themselves around what's working and around what's not working? And then helping them tease out, like, is any of that true? <laughs> or is that like something your mom or grandmother told you like 30 years ago and you just brought it into your point of view on dairy, for example? And, or for a lot of women, like they're totally deathly afraid of fruit because they've been told it's a carb. <laughs> it's like, and it has sugar. I'm like, okay, but it's not the same sugar as that granola bar that you're having at four o'clock. Like, let's just have the apple. And you're probably craving sugar because you're, de you're denying your body nature's sugar. Um, and, and so a lot of it is giving them permission to just do what they're naturally craving and kind of tune them in. It's like, well, you, you're craving sugar, but what's nature's sugar? It's not a chocolate bar. It's a bowl of strawberries or whatever is your go-to um, preference on fruit. And then also giving them permission. A lot of times it's like, oh, well, they prefer bananas, let's say, but they read somewhere 10 years ago that bananas are high in whatever. And so they've like, haven't eaten them in 10 years. And I'm like, oh my goodness, <laughs> just eat the banana. And, 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 be your own curious scientist. So really the first few sessions, it's more of helping them tune in and have more self-awareness around what things are working and then what things are really drawing down their energy or negatively impacting their digestion uh, or keeping them up at night. So, you know, you and I know that alcohol falls into the keeping them up at night category. Are they having some sort of beverage that is caffeine um, after like for me personally, I can't have anything after noon, but some people could have it at like four o'clock and it would still not, but just having more self-awareness and, you know, compassion and grace for yourself and understanding yourself better so that ultimately we get them to a point where, you know, they just make better decisions for themselves on a day to day because they have clarity on how that decision is going to affect like the whole waterfall of their wellness for the next 24 hours, week, months, years. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. I love how you brought up the stories that we tell ourselves about things, you know, like, oh, a banana is like off limits, but then like, I'm going to have this like Halloween candy. Cause you know, it's like, I've, I've given myself permission to really cheat, but not cheat like a little bit with my banana. You know, it's so silly like that, how we and rationalize that. But what I really love about the stories too, is that like, I think we live in a world where there's like, there's so much information, like there's, there's really not a dearth of that. Like that's all at our fingertips. If anything, we're dealing with too much competing information, which is going to be my second question for you. But like, I think we kind of all in some ways know kind of what to do, but we have a hard time maybe committing to it or making it implementable in our lives. And I think like when we, when we do normal coaching or one-on-one -on -one coaching with someone around like their goals, their dreams, like their business, you know, like kind of you get at the, the, underneath what's the story you're telling yourself that's like preventing you from actually taking action on that. And I see a lot of like nutritionists or people in more of the wellness spaces not really go into that territory. It's just like, oh, just do this. And I'm like, yeah, we know to do that. But like, tell me why I'm not doing it or why it's hard for me to apply it in my life. So I'm glad that you're having those conversations about like, what's the secret backstory or the like taboo or the thing that's preventing me that, you know, maybe it's like this, this big wall I'm putting up that I just don't have enough time because any little thing extra on my plate is just going to make me feel so frazzled. And so I don't even give up, you know, I give up before I even kind of start type of thing. And I think that's really effective to apply to the wellness area because like we kind of know what to do in generalities, but there's a reason why we're not doing it. Right. And so working with you can be really effective with that. What other kind of subconscious stories have you heard, like had come up in like your line of work where some kind of block is just preventing someone from, you know, moving forward with something that would be really great for them? Hmm. Well, I've really got, I'm kind of in my food mind right now. So I'll try and think of an example that's not food related. Cause I think that's sort of like the deepest, most emotional stories tend to be around, um, 
food. And, you know, I think most of us are addicted in some shape or form to sugar uh, and, and understanding like all the ways society, you know, we have Halloween coming up, you know, every single holiday, your birthday, like from day one, we're just instilled how sugar is for like, when you're not feeling great, it's to celebrate anything. It's the perfect gift. Like there's just so many emotional stories um, around sugar, but I think, um, yeah, let's talk about sleep. Cause it's another huge one. And I was going to say, as you were talking, sometimes I'm just giving my clients permission to, and, and encouraging them to figure out again, how to do absolutely nothing. Like even just for five minutes, because we're not very good at doing nothing. You know, even, especially as women, it's like, oh, I have an hour off. Like, how am I going to perfectly curate my hour off? I'm going to, you know, like have a bubble bath and listen to this podcast and journal and meditate and do like 20 yoga postures. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm already exhausted hearing about your wellness strategy there. Like, can we just dial it back? What, what, it, what is like the one or maybe two things in that whole list that you're doing that really fills your cup? or really helps your nervous system regulate itself. And so you feel like you're okay, you're, you're done for the day. And, and so oftentimes it's, it's just drawing out the, and, and almost always they're like, oh, well, the first thing I started doing, or, you know, they have clarity on like, what is the one in the list of 10 that they actually love doing? And, and I think that's so much a part of it is particularly in, in making it sustainable and not making it feel like something else on the to-do list, which is again, counter counterintuitive um, to wellness. And then the other thing I thought I would mention, cause it's, you know, it's somewhat related to food uh, in general, we're just taking so many supplements. It is insane. Often, uh, well, almost every client that comes to me, I, I, that's one of the questions on the questionnaire and they're taking at least three, like it's between three and 20 things. And you, you'll ask them and back to the information over, it's like they've read somewhere, they heard somewhere and they just buy the supplement and they start taking it. And maybe they've been taking it for five to 10 years. And I'm like, well, what is it doing for you? Like at this point with so many supplements, you can't actually distill down what's doing what and is it really helping you? And then what most people don't know is your body builds up tolerance to all of these things. So and it takes a lot of energy to break down a condensed pill versus eating the banana. <laughs> like, and so coming back to the simplicity of, of taking, taking off some layers, like maybe they're not necessarily toxic layers, but there's just so much going on that it's really hard for them to know, like what's making them feel better, what's helping them thrive. And, and then even if it's something healthy that might be making them lower energy just because it's so much harder to digest and process every day yeah so it sounds really bespoke is that like there's not like these 10 food rules you have to follow it's like everyone's going to be slightly unique slightly different we're going to work with you and like really listen to your body about what it's needing and craving and like needing to thrive with that i'm curious with your work because this is something obviously we also hold dear at being alcohol free women you know, alcohol is a huge toll on our body. You know, there's a lot of different systems that are affected and, you know, none of us have just drank one or two drinks in our life. It is, you know, something that we've been doing for years, if not decades. So if someone's kind of new to the alcohol-free lifestyle and they're ready to start the healing work, like what are some things that you think are important for like newly alcohol-free people to focus on to kind of undo some of those like years of um, that cellular damage or whatever the alcohol has been doing for that while? Is there any kind of key things to kind of think about or look out for or focus on? Yeah, well, often, um, depending on the client, but we can do, um, you know, a more intense detox because it, most people who've had, you know, an ongoing relationship with alcohol, you can start to see right away that you have more energy, that you have um, probably improved digestion, improved sleep. But there's kind of like next level that we can get down to, to again, help them understand, okay, so besides alcohol, that was definitely holding them back in probably more than 10 ways. What are the other things that they normalized that maybe even they connected to, you know, like maybe they always watched Netflix with, I don't know, like spicy peanuts and, and beer or something, <laughs> but not a very female example, but um and, and they just can't let go to that other thing that reminds them um, or they're just, yeah, I think it, 
it comes down to, I'm sorry, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> you can start over. <laughs> yeah. What's the question? Uh, what like alcohol-free people should like newly alcohol-free people could focus on to like focus on their healing. Okay. So I think it's kind of three, three areas. One is clarifying the relationship with their gut health and removing alcohol immediately improves your gut health, but there's probably a lot of other things that you can do. Um, eating more fruits and vegetables and fiber in general is going to add, but maybe you want to add in some fermented foods and, and that's something, um, that can really help. And, and again, just ha having a deeper understanding of your digestion. Another thing that I often focus on is your biorhythms and understanding like when is, so maybe now you've removed alcohol, but you're drinking like water all day long, which is amazing. Stay hydrated. But oftentimes uh, having a lot of liquid when we're about to try and digest a meal, although it's very culturally normal that you're drinking a lot of liquids throughout the meal, we actually digest things better when we have less liquid specifically while you're eating the meal, you can have a big glass of water 20 minutes before, and then you want to let yourself, your digestive fire really work before you douse it again with a bunch of, of liquids. And um, one thing I really see in the NA space, and I mean, I think it's amazing that there's all these new products and there's amazing wellness beverages. Even I see a lot of carbonated options and I get that you want to have something instead of the thing that you were enjoying drinking alcohol wise before, but I do think ultimately to stay hydrated, water is always the best. I mean, we can talk about ways to make water more interesting. Um, but yeah, I, th I, th I think having awareness about the way all of those fun, bubbly extra drinks are impacting your digestion. Um, you know, a lot of women get really bloated after drinking carbonated beverages. So even though it's like this wellness, maybe even has adaptogens at the end of the day, a flat water in the long term is going to be better. And again, one or two, no big deal. But uh, I see a lot of clients drinking like all day long bubbly water and, and not really having a lot of awareness on how that might be making them feel and in fact, in their impacting their digestion. And, um, I think another one is, is adding in superfoods and, or spices. So there's all sorts of things that really help our body. Like if you don't want to put yourself through a quote unquote detox, which I think they're amazing and, you know, generally kind of wellness wash diets, but there's a, a smart way of doing it that can give you a lot of information and an immediate self-awareness about how certain things like caffeine and sugar and gluten and dairy are affecting you or not. Um, at the same time, just having, for me personally, some of my favorites are acai, you've probably seen you can get acai smoothie bowls or smoothies, um, or some of the more potent um, spirulina, there's green and blue, you can get it in, in drops or powders and just kind of incorporating that in your life, whether it's in a smoothie um, or, you know, you can take that as a supplement if you, you can't, you know, you don't want to incorporate it in your, your meal, uh, but they are just so potent in really helping your body do what it's naturally designed to do on its own when you're supporting it, which is detoxify itself. So the, the alcohol, like you're going to get immediate benefits, but really like our bodies, I'm really excited because I'm going to hit seven years, my next sober, sober birthday, so birthday, <laughs> which is in March, but it's kind of a magic one because every seven years, your entire body has now reproduced every single cell in your body. So, you know, you're, you're kind of like a different organism in a lot of ways. And therefore all the damage that you've done over the years with whatever the, the toxin is, is completely out of your system. And, and you, I don't know about you, but I really did feel from year to year to year, I just kept feeling better. And yeah. the little things you can do to support yourself in, in getting, you know, naturally um, having more energy and your system detoxifying and having optimal gut health, just kind of elevate and amplify what's already going on. Yeah.
I love that so much. I'm also on the seven year next February train. So we're about the same time frame. And there's sometimes, you know, the concept of the pink f- cloud that like people almost talk about negatively. And I always believe that like, yeah, obviously at first everything's so new and everything's so exciting and all the energy you have. And it's not like you're going to have that level of like, you know, oh wow to everything for the rest of your life. But I also think that there are ways to keep that extended. Like there's ways that you can prioritize your wellness. There's a way that you can prioritize your self-reflection there. You're prioritizing your bigger goals and dreams that give you fulfillment. Like it's, uh, it's not just like this little window of time that you get to like have this exciting new change in your life. You really can extend it sustainably I think into the future by continuing to just prioritize yourself and your growth and your wellness and all that kind of stuff so I have um two more questions for you one is do you find like in today's day and age in the wellness world there's so much competing advice so like you said someone heard something over here and then over here and we have like almost food wars going on and they can be really dogmatic like anywhere from the raw vegan diet to the carnivore diet and like nothing in between what is your opinion on some of those food wars? And it sounds like you kind of personalize a lot of your things per the client, like that maybe something might not agree well with one person, but another person might not be a big dealer or something like that. Or how do you kind of navigate that? Like this is off limits bad versus like, you know what I mean? That the food wars kind of prime us to do. Yeah, well, I think ultimately there is no one size fits all. And that's what, you know, someone who's selling you a, dogmatic one size fits all solution that's supposedly for every human on the planet, even though we're in different geographic locations and we have different blood types and we're in different phases of our lives and cycles and, uh, you know, in different climates, like there's just so many things that impact what's going to make you feel best on a given day. So I think it's also important to just sort of have an appreciation for the variety and and figure out what works for you. So I'm not against, I mean, we could get into it. There's a few that um, I think it's unfortunate that people utilize for years and years when they were designed to be a diet for three months or something, right? But I think what's important ultimately, and and for certainly as a mother, like I don't want my kids to have a weird restrictive relationship with food. I want them, and I help my clients to get to this point as well, that you're in tune to what feels good when you eat it and you're in tune to what, you know, is amazingly delicious, but ultimately slows your digestion and makes you feel kind of like crap. And it's not to say never eat that, but just be clear on how you want to feel the next day. And then little by little, you make better choices, more consistent in honoring what makes you thrive instead of like, just get by or, um, and, and around the, the time thing, like, you and I know that removing alcohol like gifts you so much time. So oftentimes it's like, it's kind of like the elephant in the wellness room. It's like the last thing that women want to consider, right? That maybe that's somehow that they could possibly change the relationship with alcohol and it would have a dramatic impact on, you know, multiple aspects of their well being. And I, I think that, yeah, I mean, the wars are unfortunate. The wars are, are to sell programs, right? It's like to keep people in sort of these internet bubbles, um, you know, really entrenched in these beliefs. And, uh, you know, I've I've been, I've done vegan for a few years. I've done vegetarian. Like ultimately, I think plant forward is, you know, kind of how I describe myself now. Just eat more plants because it's getting increasingly hard for people to eat fresh local produce do that as more and often, and you kind of already know like what types of proteins really make you feel great and make you feel strong, what kind of carbohydrates you digest best and make you feel energized versus lethargic after eating them. And if you really don't, well then, you know, you come work with me and I'll help you connect these dots. But uh, it's really about giving yourself permission to make intuitive decisions on on what to eat and also permission to like 20% of the time, eat however you want, like live life. You know, you're you're in Rome or whatever. You're not going to, I mean, if it were me, I'm, I'm not going to like limit myself in the menu. I'm just going to look at the menu and see what sounds like the most amazing and or what smells the most amazing and order that um, and not feel 
restricted. Having said that, also, the more that you eat, you, you get sort of entrenched into healthier decision making, when you have that really unhealthy choice, it might not hit you with the same nostalgia <laughs> as it did when you were eating that a lot more frequently. And, and that's okay. And I invite my clients to just get again, super curious and aware at that moment and like really enjoy what you're consuming, like the butteriness or whatever it is that, you know, maybe you don't eat all the time and not, um, not add this layer of, of self-judgment and, and, you know, wake up the next day with a, a shame hangover or whatever, cause you ate poorly. No, it's like, just take all the information and, and help yourself in make better, making better choices as you go. Yeah. I love how you like frame that like a lot of ways of like p how we change our relationships with alcohol too, because like the more we tune into like how we feel, like, let's say you even took like a month off and then you drink again, like it's, you're going to feel it. Right. And like, it's not that it's something that it's bad or, you know, you messed up or anything like that, but it's just, you, you notice it more now that you're like, you're not treating your body like a pounding bag that like your body's becoming more and more sensitive and more and more intuitive to like what it actually wants it needs. It will tell you. And so if, if a month off of alcohol and then you drink once after that, your body doesn't like it, it will tell you, you know? And I find that like, ever since I went alcohol free, my body has become a lot more, not sensitive in a bad way, but like more community communicative about like what foods to feed it and like what I what's going to make me not sleep as well and what's going to maybe give me a headache the next day and so like even you know someone like me like sugar is you know I like dessert obviously I'm not like someone who is like you know never eat dessert or something like that but I can tell like especially if something wasn't made with love with wholesome ingredients and was more of a processed dessert like I will feel it the next day I know that about myself and I think it's so much easier to like stop yourself from doing something that you know you just don't want to feel that way I don't have time to feel that way is so much more of an intuitive way about going about eating than feeling like there's rules if that makes sense it's like if I eat this I might feel like that and I don't think I want to do that feel like that so that's a good evidence for me to maybe not and that way like it's always very empowering you know instead of feeling like you're just listening to dogma and I'm sure that's something you celebrate so much too yeah it's really about giving agency back to you like you there are so many aspects of your well-being that you're completely in control of and um yeah just make good choices <laughs> and then you know when you you decide not to unconsciously not make a good choice uh you know really be all there well, Megan, how can people learn more about you work with you um I know you have a podcast yourself tell us all about it yeah, my podcast is called Wellness as a Way of Life. You can check it out on all platforms. I've had Carolina three times now. I think she's the the most uh, hosted. <laughs> Yay! And um, yeah, you can check out my website, meganswanwellness.com. You can uh, reach out to me on Instagram or on LinkedIn. That's where I spend the most time and social media at Megan Swan Wellness. I work, uh, we usually start with a 90 minute deep dive strategy session, really map out uh, a blueprint for 12 months of what would be a really beautiful progression for you based in you know, your lifestyle, your amount of time and energy you have to dedicate to micro shifts, what's already working and what your personal goals and desires are for yourself in like a 12 year, 12 month period. And uh, yeah, from there, many clients decide that they want to do that with support and guidance. And, you know, me as their personal wellness cheerleader and with a little tough love mixed in. Uh, and yeah, I think I, I thrive best working one-on-one. -on -one. I'm, I'm about to start working in, in group programs uh, coming in January, but for now, that's the best way to seek me out. Amazing. Well, if any part of this conversation resonated with you, do be sure to check out Megan's resources and her one-on-one -on -one coaching. And, you know, I've had the pleasure of knowing Megan for quite many years now. Like she said, I was on her podcast three times, which makes me so honored. And we finally got to meet in real life in Palm Springs, just a few, what was it, a month ago now, maybe a month and a half ago now. And you've led us on a yoga class, like you were just bringing all of your wisdom there. And it was such an incredible experience to all be together and kind of learn from each other 
and, you know, have this group of alcohol-free women, which is so rare in our society, alcohol-free entrepreneurs too, on top of that, be all together, sober dance, sober party, and just get with it. So I just wanted to thank you for, you know, coming and leading your yoga class and just giving all of your beautiful experiences to, to some of the newer coaches as you've been working and coaching for longer. So it's just so cool to see that, like, incredible environment that we've created, you know, where like we're all feeding off of each other and learning off of each other. So I hope this episode was really helpful for anyone who is tuning in today. Uh, be sure to check out Megan and ask her any questions. I'm sure you're open for DMs or emails or anything like that about people's specific situations. And I think that that's just so beautiful about the, today's world. We get so little attention from our doctors and from, you know, the people in the white coats that like to have someone actually handhold you through all of this in your life is such a special thing. Your health is probably the most important thing you could ever invest in like we don't get that back in the same way that we could get anything else back we kind of put everything else in front of it and then like truly like when health is taken away that's like when we really that's when we know how important it is right <laughs> yeah exactly it's just like on a micro level when you you get a head cold and then all of a sudden you can breathe again like, oh my goodness <laughs> Okay, well, Frilly and Megan, thank you so much for being here today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll be sure to include all your links in the show notes. Amazing. Thanks again for having me.